Andy Johnson here. What's the deal with the science of reading? We are going to look at the theoretical basis behind the science of reading and try to understand why this theoretical basis is important. This is part of a webinar that I'll be doing April 27th. And this is the third part of this series. We'll be looking at four things. So let's take a look at theories, research, and stuff, and try to understand why the theoretical basis and understanding behind the science of reading is important. First of all, understanding what a theory is in the world of science. A theory is not an untested assumption. That would be a hypothesis. In the world of science, a theory is a way to explain a set of facts. It's used to understand phenomena. It's like a dot-to-dot -dot picture. It connects the dots and helps us understand things. We have the theory of evolution, the theory of gravity, behavioral learning theory. It helps us understand facts, explains a set of facts, and helps us perceive the world and understand phenomena as we are looking at it. Now, this is where research comes in. Each research study is like a dot in a grand dot-to-dot -dot picture. Research connects the data dots. Different theories connect different data dots differently. This is why you can have two or three or more theories describing a thing, and each one can be research-based. You can have a bottom-up theory of reading and an interactive theory of reading, and both can be said to be research-based because they connect different data dots differently. And sometimes you see they, inter uh, they connect some of the same data dots. However, as I said, different data dots connect different different data differently. You have to see if they are weak theories or robust theories. A robust theory is a theory which accounts for the most facts or the most data dots. A weak theory leaves a lot of information unaccounted for. Okay, it connects that data, but there's all this stuff that it doesn't explain. That would be a weak theory. So let's take a look at some theories of reading. We're going to look at bottom-up versus interactive theories. Now, the science of reading is based on a simple view of reading and some variations on this. The simple view of reading says that reading is decoding plus language comprehension or listening comprehension, that equals reading or reading comprehension. And you see variations on this, word reading, listening comprehension, variations, decoding language comprehension, variations, simple view of reading, decoding oral language comprehension reading. Essentially, you decode, you sound out words, you listen to the words as they go through your head, and then you comprehend. That's what reading is according to the simple view of reading. Now, a theoretical model is a demonstration of how a theory works in real life. And there's a lot of theoretical models, a lot of reading in the reading, uh, and I'll show you a few theoretical models related to reading. There are lots of different ones. And again, don't be fooled because of the colorful graphs and the pictures, because these don't always replicate reality. When looking at theoretical models and theories, you always have to say which one accounts for the most facts. And again, you can have complicated ones, all colorful. Complex doesn't mean it's better. It just means it's more complicated. It doesn't mean that it accounts for the most facts. And there's a whole bunch of different ones. And again, complicated doesn't mean it is uh, more robust. It just means it's complicated. All these different theoretical models of reading. And all are a little bit right. All are a little bit wrong. No theory is 100% right. And by the way, theories are neither right nor wrong. They're robust 
or they're weak. Now, the phonological model is a form of a simple view of reading. And this is prevalent, and I think this is what the general public generally thinks about reading, that reading is sounding out words. You see the words on the page, that information goes from the eyes to the thalamus, you sound it out, and that's one-way flow from the page up to the cortex. That's what reading is. That's a phonological processing model. It explains reading this way. Scarborough's rope is popular now. It's a theoretical model based on the simple view of reading. And again, you have decoding up here, you have language comprehension there, and you have all these little parts and the strands become closer and closer, and skilled reading is when, the, all right, you get the idea. Now, just because it's a neat and interesting model doesn't mean it's robust. I, this is a simple view of reading, and Scarborough's model, there's some neat stuff in there, but it leaves a lot of stuff unaccounted for. Decoding is sounding out words, all right? It still is a simple view of reading, even though it has these nice, colorful things and it seems very interesting, okay? Weak theory, simple view of reading. There are simply too many facts unaccounted for in the simple view of reading. Good readers skip 20 to 40% of the words on the page. 10 times more information is flowing from the th cortex down than from the thalamus up. Proficient readers often insert semantically correct words. Proficient readers don't look at every letter. Information in the cortex is used to direct the eyes during reading. Eyes do not move in straight lines across the page. And sounding out word skills do not always transfer to authentic uh, reading situations. And again, it is a weak theory, the simple view of reading. And Scarborough, that's a simple view of reading. Because it leaves too many facts, and these are just some of them unaccounted for. Now, an interactive theory, and there's a variety of these, says what's in the head interacts with what's on the page. We use what's in our head to help us understand what's on the page. I can read stuff about literacy pretty quickly because there's a lot of literacy stuff in here. But when this same brain tries to read stuff about financial planning, not so much up here, I become a severely struggling reader. We use what's in our head to help us understand what's on the page. That is a, a transactional view, view of reading, a theory of reading. That's another type of interactive theory. In a transaction, both parties give. Transaction says what's in the head transacts with what's on the page to help us create meaning. That transactional view, it transacts. Now, here is a theoretical model based on that, a neurocognitive model. We use what's in our head to understand what's on the page. During the act of reading, almost 10 times more information flows down from the cortex to the thalamus and the page, then flows up. And we use three cueing systems, interactive, interdependent cueing systems, to recognize words, not identify, but to recognize words during reading. And information goes from the page up to the relay station in the brain called the thalamus. We use these interactive systems to recognize words and this top-down flow of reading. All right, almost 10 times more information flowing down. Proficient readers use minimal letter clues. All right, we can read this, all but the initial vowels removed, once upon a time, there was a handsome prince. He lived in a castle. We don't need every stinking letter. In the same way, these letters are scrambled. We can still read this. I think this is a wonderful class. You're going to be great special education teachers. You get the idea. When we read text, our eyes do not move in a straight line across the page. They skip, and these are called saccades, and they go back. That's called regressions, and where our eyeballs land, that's called fixations. Now, why is that important for research in the, in the science of reading? In research, we see what we look for. And if we start out our research with a simple view of reading, that reading is sounding out words, 
Well, that impacts the types of questions we ask. We ask sounding out word questions. We create treatment related to sounding out words. We have sounding out word measures. We analyze the data and interpret it in terms of sounding out words. And we use research methodologies that quantifies sounding out word scores. So yes, the theoretical basis behind research and behind the science of reading is important. If we believe reading is creating meaning with print, we have a lot more questions and different types of questions. And our methodology, as it should be, should be defined by the question. Quantitative research is important, but it is only one type of research. Research should be defined not by the methodology, but by the question. And our treatment measures results will focus on creating meaning with print instead of sounding out words. That's why theoretical assumptions are very important. Now, some people will collect data and say, well, the research shows that. But research is not research unless and until it has been subjected to blind peer review and published in an academic journal. I don't care how many people are in the study or how big in an organization or for how long they've collected data. I just read something from Forbes magazine where they did this years long study, but it hadn't been subjected to blind peer review. So it cannot be considered research. Research is not research unless and until it has been subjected to blind peer review. That's what science of reading advocates must understand. These are things that are not research. It's merely collecting data. Nope. Blind peer review tells you if you are analyzing the data correctly, interpreting the data. Reports or white papers. If you look on the website of letters, Louisa Motes has a white paper about the importance of letters. But when you look at that, that's not research. And when you look at the citations of this white paper, well, they are not related to the points she was trying to make. She misinterprets or misuses research. Now, had that white paper and theoretical papers are fine, but had that white paper been subjected to blind peer review, it would have been rejected by any good academic journal. Think tanks and political organizations, they collect data all the time, but that's not research. They start with a belief system and collect data to support that belief system. And finally, America Public Media, Emily Hanford, she's not a reading expert. That's not reading research. Education Week, that's not a peer reviewed journal. National Council on Teacher Quality, that is not peer reviewed. They all have a point of view. What's the deal with the science of reading? This has been looking at the theoretical basis of the science of reading.